Uh, first talk of the second half, and this is a talk from uh, Tori Hewell Davis. She's going to come and join us up at the front now. Um, and she's going to be telling us about the, the Chagos Islands, which um, I know very little about, and I don't think I knew they existed until I saw the title of the talk. So, uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. Should be a good one. Thank you. Hello. Okay, so hello. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about a very topical and ongoing David and Goliath story tonight. It's something that I feel very passionate about, and I learned about it some time ago. And whenever I can, I try and share this story uh, with people. It's um, an awfully frustrating story. So the Chagos Islands are a group or archipelago of islands in um, the Indian Ocean, and um, they are owned by the UK and form the British Indian Ocean Territory. Um, if you imagine a paradise island, um, this is Chagos Islands, the most beautiful beaches, fantastic coral atoll, uh, ecosystems very important, um, beautiful sunsets, it's paradise. Until 1971, there were 2,000 inhabitants in the um, main island, which was inhabited um, by um, very simple folk. There were 2,000 there, and they lived very simply, very happily. So it sounds strange, until 1971, um, there were 2,000 people living here. Um, and so what happened to them, it wasn't a mystery at all. Um, it wasn't a case of the Incas disappearing and um, dying. It was, in fact, down to um, the 1966 Act, in when the US, um, sorry, when the British government bought a Seychelles company, which owned all of the British Indian Ocean territories for 600,000 pounds and which Britain did after that, a deal with the US, so that they could own the military base. By 1971, every person from Diego Garcia had been um, forcibly removed from, from the island and taken to Mauritius, Seychelles, and the UK. So it sounds kind of cool, um, living in Mauritius or the Seychelles, paradise to some, but in fact, if you can imagine being told to pack what you can carry there and then, to leave your pets behind, you have no money, and then you're taken a thousand miles away from home, um, this isn't paradise. So the big UK-US deal, the British government, under Harold Wilson, did a secret deal with the United States. They agreed to give an $11 million subsidy to purchase the Polaris nuclear missiles in return for the islands as a military base. By 1981 to 1982, the US government has spent about 135 million to create one of their biggest military bases. And to give you a rough idea of how big that is, the Pentagon say there are about 655 buildings there. From then to now, the Chagosians home has become home to an enormous US military base. Um, and some of the largest US warplanes are there, um, the B-52s and B-2s. And four years ago, the Pentagon added a $32 million submarine base. So what was originally a peaceful paradise island is now a military base, and laughably they call it the footprint of freedom. It's been an airstrike launch pad in the Persian War, Iraq War, and the war in Afghanistan. And there's also a significant satellite spy station there. It's also said that there may be a secret CI detention center for high-level Al-Qaeda suspects. And there seems to be evidence to prove this, but as there is only like, you know, authorized military personnel allowed there, no one can quite corroborate it. In the UK, um, the Chagosians who have been um, living in the UK have been fighting for justice under Article 7 from the International Criminal Court, which describes the deportation of forcible transfer of population by expulsion as a crime against humanity. In 2000, a British court ruled that the order to evacuate Diego Garcia's inhabitants was invalid, but the court also upheld the island's military status, which permits only personnel um, authorised by the military to actually inhabit the island. The Chagosians sued the British government for compensation, but a British judge ruled then that although the Chagosians had been treated shamefully, their claims were unfounded. In 2004, the British government continued to block the Chagosians' claims by issuing a really old royal prerogative called the Order for Counsel. But in May 2006, the High Court ruled that the Chagosians can return to other Chagos islands, calling the British conduct outrageous, unlawful. However, in 2009, the then Foreign Secretary David Miliband moved to make the Chagos Islands the biggest marine island uh, reserve sorry, in the world, 
and they joined forces with some of the biggest environmental organisations in the world. Sounds fantastic until you find out during the WikiLeaks um, cable gates um, last year, we found out that the diplomatic cables confirmed the proposed marine reserve should, and I quote, assure that US interests were safeguarded, blah, blah, blah. The biots former inhabitants would find it difficult, if not impossible, to pursue their claim for resettlement if the entire Chagos archipelago were a marine reserve, end of quote. Um, I've done this really badly. John Pilger and other political commentators have done it fantastically, and I really wish that if this has like given you any um, f- um, appetite for the for the subject, you would go and Google John Pilger at least. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tori. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure what to say after that. I, all the kind of stupid jokes and things that I attempt normally. Um, just don't seem kind of fitting. So I'll just move on to the next speaker, uh, which is Francis Fish. 